Hey everybody. Today I want to talk to you about mechanical pencils. Um, it's a topic that I've been asked a lot about and it's one of those um, things that I've been meaning to do a video on for a while so I'm glad to be able to do it. Um, I use a lot of mechanical pencils. People see it in my videos. Um, I do actually probably still draw with traditional wood pencils more often. But mechanical pencils, when I work small, when I work in sketchbooks, when I go traveling, they're invaluable. And I've always loved mechanical pencils. Um, this is this is one of the first mechanical pencils I ever bought, uh, probably 30 or 40 years ago. Well, maybe not 40 years ago, but 30 some years ago. Um, I've always uh, had a fascination for them. My dad was an architect, so um, I always sort of grew up around pretty high-end pencils. And so I thought I would go through a number of different types of pencils with you. And uh, we're going to start off by kind of explaining what a mechanical pencil is, the different types, the different grades, and then I'll go into the ones that I like more personally and maybe help you to make some decisions on pencils that you've thought about or, or what have you, okay? So we're going to start off with this one. It's a GraphGear 1000 made by Pentel. It's 0.5. So 0.5 is probably the industry standard of mechanical pencils. This is um, half of a millimeter, right? 0.5 of a millimeter. And uh, you can see the tip here, quite small um, in relation to my finger. Um, actually, I'm going to relate it to a standard wood pencil. Right? You can see how small that is. Um, so 0.5 is basically the size that every pencil manufacturer out there makes, every mechanical pencil manufacturer. Um, I'm sure someone watching this is going to say, no, I know of this one manufacturer in Korea that only makes blah, blah, blah. But... For the most part, every major manufacturer makes at least 0.5s. Um, some of them make other sizes, but this is kind of the basic. That's where it all starts, right? Um, and then from there, people branch out to different sizes that they may enjoy um, or prefer. So the 0.5, as I said, just a very, very basic middle, middle of the road, middle size for pencils. 0.7... Um, I'm going to go through all four of the graph gears here. So the graph gear 1000. Um, the 0.7 obviously is just a little bit bigger. If we look at these together, you can see it's it's just a fraction bigger, right? Because 0.5 is half a millimeter. This is 0.7 of a millimeter. millimeter. So it's only 0.2 of a millimeter different. Not, not much difference, right? Um, the two of them are very, very similar. They give very similar um, line thicknesses. The difference um, for some people, some people just prefer it, and the difference really is if you're heavy-handed, if you do, a, you put a lot of pressure, the 0.7 would be less likely to break than the 0.5. Okay. Um, the 0.3, so if we compare that to the 0.7, much, much smaller. Right? So this is great for um, very fine work um, and details, what have you, obviously much much finer than those. And then the 0.9 is the other um, big, like sort of very common size. So those four LEDs and, and that one, if we compare the 0.9 to the 0.3, you can see it's a huge difference. Um, so those four sizes are kind of the industry standard when it comes to mechanical pencils. There are some manufacturers make a 0.4, some make a 0.35. There's I've seen a number of different sizes. Um, the problem with any of those sort of unusual sizes is that they tend to be proprietary. So you're going to have a hard time finding leads. Um, and if you stick with, you know, the 0.7s and the 0.5s, um, it's very easy to find different brands that have it and different softnesses, right? Um, I won't go much into the softness portion, but HB is basically dead center. Uh, it's, it's from the French O and Ba which is high and low. Um, anything with a B, as it gets pro progressively larger, like a 2, or yeah, as it gets progressively larger, sorry, uh, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, it gets softer. The H, as it gets pro progressively larger, it gets harder. So the line is fainter, okay? Um, most mechanical pencil lead is only available up to a 2B. Some, some sizes, maybe even only an HB. Uh, the 0.5, I've been able to find 4B. It's hard to find 4B in uh, in most other sizes. It is quite a soft, soft lead. So um, now there is one other kind of mechanical pencil. 
it's often called a clutch pencil or a, um, a, a lead holder. And it looks like this. These are a tool that architects use. Um, the reason that it's, that it's not really a mechanical pencil is when you press down, I'll see if I can get that all in frame. When you press down on it, the, the lead just kind of comes out, right? It doesn't advance. Now I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video because there are some, um, <clears throat> there are some exceptions to that. There's a couple of brands that are, are quite interesting and I'll explain those for you in a minute. But this guy is nice because it gives you, it's, it's two millimeters, which is twice the thickness of a 9B. But if you sharpen it in one of these guys, you can get a super fine point. So if we look at that compared to a 9B, it's actually finer. Where am I going here? My camera's over here. It's actually finer than the 9B, right? It even tapers down to similarly to a 0.5 okay so these are these are a, a type of pencil they're generally pretty inexpensive um that i use a lot and as you can see on here you can get them in 6b i think i even have 8b um lead in some of that um so there's a lot more range but they're not technically mechanical pencils except for one other brand that i'm going to show you okay so anyway so there you got the basics and now I want to talk about why we would use mechanical pencils and what kind of pencils are the best, okay? Or the best as far as for me, right? Um, so this is a mechanical pencil, okay? And this pencil is worth, I'm going to use my 0.5, about $1, okay? Um, in actual fact, it's probably a lot less than $1. I think that you can normally get these in, in like five packs and um, or 10 packs even in there, you know, 10 packs for $7, so they're actually 70 cents. But for the sake of math, let's say that this is a $1 pencil, okay? This is roughly a $10 pencil. Um, again, it, depending upon what store you go to, I've seen them as high as $12. I see them online for um, $8, what have you. It's a Graft Gear 500, sorry. But the point is, it is roughly 10 times as expensive as this, okay? And then there's this guy, this is a Rotring, okay? And this is roughly a $40 pencil. And again, I've seen these for 28, 30, I've seen them for 60, whatever. But the, the bottom line is you're basically looking at something that's $1, something that's 10 times as expensive and something that is 40 times as expensive. Now, if I use this pencil, am I gonna be 40 times better than this? No. If I use this pencil, am I gonna be 10 times better than this? No. A mechanical pencil does one thing. It holds lead, right? That's all it is. You cannot, I'm gonna see if I can get one of these out without, oh, this is a brand new one. <laughs> I should have grabbed one that was already open but so these little leads okay you cannot draw with one I mean you could maybe but not very well and you would break it so the only purpose that these mechanical pencils all of them serve is to hold that lead if this pencil or this pencil holds the same lead if I put this lead in one of these pencils you're gonna get the same result from all of them. So why would I spend 10, 10 times as much for this one or 40 times as much for this one? And it really all comes down to comfort, okay? There are features on them, but the main thing with high quality mechanical pencil is which pencil is more comfortable for you, which pencil is gonna make you draw more and be more comfortable in your hand and, and, and make you enjoy using it. I can tell you that these ones are not, okay? They work great in a pinch. I use them sometimes. Um, but I mean, obviously, they're not very well made. These will break. This is, like when I feel it, it's kind of, I can, I can feel it starting to go already. The springs in there are not very good. It's all plastic, okay? This guy 
will, if you take care of it, will last you a, quite a long time. This is a, a really nice metal knurled edge. It feels really good in the hand. This is plastic, but it's a much higher grade plastic than this. I can actually feel some, some give in this one when I press. This is a hard plastic. And there is a lot of metal on it, as well as that. And this guy is 100% metal, right? I mean, this is a beautiful piece of engineering. I feel like um, this will probably outlast me if I take care of it, right? I mean, everything on it, even the grip and stuff is metal. So, is it worth spending that much money? That's up to you and it depends on a number of factors. Obviously, it depends on your budget. Depends on whether you can afford to spend it. And it depends on how much you draw. How, you know, is is the drawing your livelihood? I'm lucky that, you know, I'm a pro professional artist and I'm able to use these tools to make a living. And therefore, obviously, I invest. But I would say that for most people, if you're serious about art, if you can afford to, maybe step away from these, right? Step away from the $1 ones and see if you can get into this kind of range, okay? So I'm gonna go through a number of the different types of pencils that are out there, okay? And the thing is, you know, as I said, these are, these are the cheapy ones. You get them at Walmart, you get them at um, Staples or wherever, any stationery store, office supply store. They will be in big packs, like 10 packs or three packs. Maybe just skip those. Look at pencils that are three or four or five dollars. Okay. And these guys are going to give you a lot more life and um, and enjoyment, really. Okay. Um, you know, there's nothing super fancy about these, but they will, you'll be able to hold them better and you'll want to use them longer. Okay. Um, now, if you have it in your budget and you can go a little bit higher, I would definitely recommend looking at some of the pencils like these Graph Gears, okay? The Graph Gear 500, got a couple of those there, and then the ones that I showed earlier, the Graph Gear 1000s, okay? Um, depending upon where you buy them, they range anywhere from $5 difference to $10 difference to only a couple of dollars difference, because I've seen these as high as $12, $15 each, and I've seen these as low as $12 or $15 each. So depending on where you buy them, they might end up being about the same price. As you can see, they're quite similar. Uh, they're both made by Pentel. They're both graph gears. Um, this one is almost entirely metal. This one is only metal at the, the front, and obviously the innards are metal. But um, the big difference for me, is the weight. Now, there's a lot of nice features on the GraphGear 1000, okay? Um, if you watch this tip here, when I press the spring, it goes away. <laughs> it's still sticking out because I have my lead out so far, sorry. If you watch that tip, it goes away, okay? So, I'll do that again. And so, when you travel, that tip has no risk of getting damaged. If it's in your pen pocket, it's not going to get damaged. This guy does not. It, it's a fixed tip. It's always going to stay out. Um, the Graph Gear 1000, I have often told people, I think is probably the best value pencil that there is. At 12 or 15 or even $20, it is a great pencil. It is going to last a long time. The little features like the retractable nib definitely um, add to its value. It is a great pencil. I use it a lot. However, and this is going to surprise people, when I reach for a pencil out of these, I normally will pick the Graph Gear 500, okay? And it's just because of the weight. The weight in my hand feels better. I don't traditionally draw like this all the time. There's a lot of holding the pencil like this, curling it around, doing it upside down, and this is just marginally lighter. It's probably 30 or 40% lighter, but when I'm working for four or five or six hours, that makes a difference, right? I'm Six foot two, 220 pounds. Trust me, the pencil is not gonna be an issue as far as weight. But for comfort, I find that these are much, much nicer pencils, okay? Um, but again, I recommend all of them. Um, the, the 500 and the 1000, totally recommend them. Um, for those of you that want a little bit of a joke, that's the old Graph 500. 
Um, I had a couple of those when I was young. I, they've been beaten up and stuff, but I've had these for probably 30 years and they're still going strong, right? Now, one of the other pencils that I really love is made by Rotring, and I showed you that earlier, the Rotring 600, okay? It comes in this black, which is all metal, and the silver. Now, this is actually the Rapid Pro. It's a very, very similar pencil. It's just, there's a few differences. I believe the Rapid Pro is a little bit more expensive. It does have, I use this quite often when I'm traveling, um, because when you hold when you hold the end and press in, it retracts the tip also. It's not quite as cool as the other one with a spring, but it still retracts the tip. So that's really nice when you're traveling. Um, so the Roaching is a beautiful pencil. It's, it's very nice, feels very nice in the hand. Even if you hold it up high, there's grips here because it's flat, it doesn't roll. A lot of nice things about it. It's all metal, just like the Graph Gear. Um, the downside of it is just like the Graph Gear 1000, is it's a bit heavy. Um, as I said, I, I use this one a lot when I'm traveling, um, but then I'm rarely sketching for more than half an hour at a time. In my studio, I probably don't use it anywhere near as much as um, the Graph Gear 500 or some of my other pencils. But definitely a good quality pencil. You have to decide whether it's worth it to you or not. Um, the cost is certainly higher on these pencils than a lot of other ones. Um, Sometimes you can find them on sale, but I mean, it's a really nice pencil. It's it's definitely worth the price, but whether or not it's worth it to you, that's that's up to you guys. Um, you'll notice on some of these, I have little stickers. That's because these little indicators, which are great, they don't, well, actually this one does go to 2B, but they don't ever go to 4B, right? So when I put my 4Bs on or my 6Bs, I have to label them. Um, now, I want to talk to you for a minute. Oh, first of all, let's talk about these guys. So these are custom-made Hemingway, Nicholas Hemingway, Hemiware.com pencils. These are beautiful pencils. Um, I have a large section over in my studio where I have um, holders for all my pencils, and they sit there, and it, you know, I'll, I'll be working with a traditional wood pencil, and I'll draw, and then I will... Uh, Think, okay I need a finer line I need a mechanical pencil and I'll reach over and I would say nine times out of ten I grab this one this is probably my favorite pencil this is also a very close second but this one is a walnut pencil it is I wish that you could see weight on here because it is it is almost exactly the same weight as this wood pencil it is a beautiful beautiful pencil it feels great in the hand it is like feather light um, the downside of it is the cost, okay? I, I won't lie, it is, um, it's from England. I think they're like 80 pounds, so 120 bucks or something like that. They are expensive pencils. If you're very, very serious about art and you have the budget, um, I would highly recommend these. Uh, they're certainly not for everyone because I know people are gonna say, well, this is a great pencil, but you know, so is this, right? Yeah, it is, but you're comparing apples and oranges. This is in a class of its own. Um, I am sure that there are people watching this that if they bought it, they would hate it, okay? It's not for everyone. They are heavy, or sorry, they are light, and some people prefer the heaviness. Even this one that's all metal, it's quite a bit lighter than this Graph Gear, okay? Um, but both of these are beautiful, beautiful pencils, and I can't say enough good things about them. I just, I really love them trying to decide if I want to get a couple more. Um, now, I had mentioned earlier that I was going to talk a little bit more about these guys, which is a, um, basically they're called lead holders or clutch pencils. The reason that they're called clutch pencils or lead holders is that, as I mentioned, it's not a true mechanical action, right? When you let go of this, the lead comes out. But the nice thing about it is that they are two millimeters. Well, guess what? There are pencils out there like this that actually have a mechanical mechanism. Okay, this one's a Studio 2.0. I don't even know what this is. It's all plastic. I don't really love it. It's okay. But I stumbled upon this pencil not too long ago. 
it is called a Kida Boshi pencil. Okay, and it comes with the pencil and the lead, and it's cheap. It's like 10 bucks. This is what it looks like. This is natural wood that's been uh, sanded down and lacquered. Okay, and look at that. It actually has a mechanical function, which is beautiful. It works really, really nicely. Now, the downside of it is you cannot use the standard sta Stabler sharpener. It won't reach. But, as I said, it does come with a sharpener which is okay. I don't love it, but it works in a pinch. Um, or there are other two millimeter sharpeners out there that you can buy like this guy right here. I'm going to see if I can, uh, this one's already pretty sharp. This guy's not. Here you go. Let's see if I can show you how sharp this gets. Okay. So you see the lead, put that in there. Come on, Justin, let's multitask here. You can kind of see that the lead's going actually into the holder. And that is a really nice point. <laughs> of course, it's focusing on this guy down there. Let's look. There you go. See? Really. So, yeah, this is a beautiful um, pencil. As I said, inexpensive. Again, I label them because otherwise I have no way of knowing what it is. But I actually really like these. I've been taking one with me to figure drawing and, and um, doing uh, quick sketches with it instead of using a wood pencil. Um, it's really quite nice. It's, it's definitely heavier than the wood pencil, but it's, um, it's pretty close in weight to that guy. So yeah, I, I definitely would recommend these if you're interested. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, some mechanical pencils have the little guy like that. Personally, I hate those. Some people like them, but uh, you know, give them a shot and see what you think. Um, the idea here is that you can draw, and then you you know you draw, and then you can go back like this. Well, after so many years of drawing, I uh, I have sort of some arthritis in my hands, I think, and I I don't find it a problem to draw and then just stop and and click. I don't think that's an issue. So for me, I don't like these. Some people do. Um, there's not a whole lot else as far as uh, different kinds of mechanical pencils. Um, I think those cover most of the ones that I use on a daily basis and that, that I enjoy. And um, I'd love to hear from you guys, see what you use, what you like. If there's something I haven't covered or something that you'd like to see covered, uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, hopefully that was interesting and enjoyable and uh, finally covered mechanical pencils. All right, have a good day.